High energy compounds are defined by having free energy change of hydrolysis more negative than negative 7.3 kilocalorie per mole, which means that hydrolysis is highly favorable and releases a large amount of free energy. Most high energy compounds contain phosphates group, including phosphoric anhydride. Phosphoric anhydrides with two high energy phosphate bonds include adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is the energy currency between catabolism and anabolism. In my previous video titled Bioenergetics, I covered the three factors that make ATP a high energy compound. It's actually not from breaking the phosphate bond, but from the relief of electron repulsion, resonance stabilization, and increase in entropy from ionization of the end product ADP and inorganic phosphate. GTP, CTP, TTP, and UTP are also phosphoric anhydride with two high energy phosphate bonds. Phosphoric anhydride with one high energy bond include inorganic pyrophosphate, as well as many nucleotide diphosphate that contribute to biosynthesis of macromolecule. UDP glucose derived from UTP is a precursor to glycogen synthesis. CDP choline derived from CTP is a precursor to the biosynthesis of phosphatidylcholine, which is a membrane phospholipid. CDP ethanolamine derived from CTP is a precursor to phosphatidylethanolamine, another membrane phospholipid. ADP glucose derived from ATP is a precursor to biosynthesis of starch. And amino acetyltRNA derived from ATP is a precursor to protein synthesis. Cyclic phosphoric anhydrides include cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP, both of which functions in biosignaling. Cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A or PKA, while cyclic GMP activates protein kinase G or PKG. ATP is actually not the most high energy compound. An intermediate of glycolysis known as phosphoenolpyruvate contains enoyl phosphate that has the highest energy among biological high energy compounds. Another intermediate of glycolysis known as 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate contains high energy acyl phosphate group, which is also found in amino acyl tRNA. Lastly, phosphocreatine contains high energy guanidinium phosphate, which also contains higher energy of hydrolysis than ATP. Other high energy compounds include S-adenosylmethionine, which contains sulfonium group. It is a common co-substrate involved in methyl group transfers. The last category of high energy compounds are electron carriers that are capable of donating electron in oxidation reduction reactions. Energy from catabolic pathways are funneled into NAD plus and FAD, generating NADH and FADH2 that in turn donate electrons to the electron transport chain to drive oxidative phosphorylation. On the other hand, hydrolysis of NADPH provides energy for anabolism or biosynthesis of macromolecules, as well as detoxification. Catabolic pathways that synthesize NADH are catalyzed by NAD-dependent dehydrogenases, including glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate dehydrogenase from glycolysis, which occurs in the cytosol, lactate dehydrogenase, which also occurs in the cytosol, isocitrate dehydrogenase, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and malate dehydrogenase from the citric acid cycle occurs in mitochondria. Malate dehydrogenase is also found in cytosol. Beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase from beta-oxidation of fatty acid is found in mitochondria and glycerol-3-phosphate dehydrogenase from triacylglycerol metabolism occurs in the cytosol. Glutamate dehydrogenase, which participates in nitrogen metabolism, is found in mitochondria and can synthesize either NADH or NADPH. Cytosolic isocitrate dehydrogenase can synthesize NADPH. However, the main enzymes that synthesize NADPH are glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase and gluconase 6-phosphate dehydrogenase from the pentose phosphate pathway that occurs in cytosol, as well as malic enzyme, which is one of the anaplerotic reactions of the TCA cycle, which also occurs in the cytosol. Hydrolysis of NADPH are catalyzed by reductases, providing energy for biosynthesis of many lipids, as well as nucleotides, including fatty acid synthase, which contains enoyl-CoA reductase and ketoacyl reductase, HMG-CoA reductase, which leads to cholesterol biosynthesis, 
and ribonucleotide reductase, which leads to biosynthesis of nucleotides. Hydrolysis of NADPH also provides energy for detoxification, including cytochrome P450 reductase and glutathione peroxidase, both of which have been covered in my video about biological oxidation and reduction. Synthesis of FADH2 can be catalyzed by mitochondrial glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, succinate dehydrogenase from the TCA cycle, and fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase from beta oxidation of fatty acids, all of which occurs in mitochondria. GTP is another high energy compound that is important in many biochemical reactions. Synthesis of GTP from GDP and inorganic phosphate is catalyzed by succinyl CoA synthetase from the TCA cycle, and hydrolysis of GTP provides energy for phosphoenopyruvate carboxykinase during gluconeogenesis, as well as provide energy for translation. The synthesis of polypeptides from mRNA, including initiation factor 2, elongation factor 2, Ts, and G. Hydrolysis of GTP also functions in signal transduction, including activation of G protein couple receptors as well as guanylocyclase, which generates cyclic GMP. ATP synthesis can be catalyzed by three different mechanisms. It can be catalyzed by adenylate kinase, which converts two ADP to ATP and AMP. It can also be catalyzed from ATP synthase through proton motive force in oxidative phosphorylation of mitochondria or photophosphorylation of chloroplasts. ATP synthesis can also be catalyzed by reversible kinases, known as substrate-level phosphorylation and dephosphorylation, including phosphoglyceride kinase and pyruvate kinase from glycolysis. ATP hydrolysis also occurs in three mechanisms. First, through reversible substrate-level phosphorylation, including hexokinase and phosphofructose kinase from glycolysis, both of which are part of the energy investment phase as well as glycerol kinase from glycerol metabolism and nucleoside diphosphate kinase, which catalyzes the exchange of terminal phosphate between different nucleoside diphosphate and triphosphates. ATP hydrolysis to ADP and inorganic phosphate include pyruvate carboxylase, which converts pyruvate to oxaloacetate that serve as an anaplerotic reaction of the TCA cycle. Propanyl-CoA carboxylase converts propanyl-CoA to S-methylmalonyl-CoA, which is part of the catabolic pathway of all-chain fatty acids. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase synthesizes myelonyl-CoA, which is a key step in fatty acid biosynthesis. Lastly, carbamyl phosphate synthetase, or CPS1, is the key enzyme in urea cycle. ATP can also be hydrolyzed to AMP and inorganic pyrophosphate, which are further hydrolyzed by inorganic pyrophosphatase. Enzymes that hydrolyzes ATP this way include arginino-succinase synthetase, which is also part of the urea cycle, acetyl-CoA synthetase, which is involved in metabolism of acetate, amino acyl tRNA synthetase, which is involved in translation, and lastly, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate synthetase or PRPP synthetase, that is involved in the synthesis of nucleotides.